Hello guys, welcome to SWK Tutorial. Today I will be teaching you guys a professional trick that is used by professionals in almost all 3D renders. Some professionals call it OCC Pass, some call it Ambient Occlusion Pass. With this trick, you can turn your ordinary renders into an awesome professional 3D renders. You can see the difference. Without Ambient Occlusion Pass, with the ambient occlusion path. So without any further ado, let's get started. So what is ambient occlusion? Ambient occlusion is usually black and white rendering that shows how objects occlude each other. If you don't understand what I mean, let me tell you in simple words. Ambient occlusion adds realism to your render by producing soft shadows in areas of interaction and contact of your model. Ambient occlusion can be done in two ways. Number one, by checking ambient occlusion in the render settings. Number two, by rendering V-Ray extra texture in render elements and then compositing it in any compositing software like Photoshop, After Effects, Neo, whatever. It's up to you. First, I will discuss method 1. Render your scene. Oops, my mistake. I forget to turn on the global illumination. If you are a beginner, I will suggest click here. Very quick settings and for interiors, click on interior preset. Slightly increase the quality. I don't want to work on a very, very low quality. Now render again. Save the result. Now I will go to my render settings. Click on global illumination tab. And I will go to GI advanced. Check ambient occlusion. Wow, we can instantly note the difference. The new render is detailed. But we can make it more detailed by understanding the ambient occlusion parameters. So let's discuss them. Render the scene and save the result. Ambient occlusion enables or disables the ambient occlusion. Multiplier. Multiply the effect of ambient occlusion. A value of 0 produces no ambient occlusion, while higher values make the ambient occlusion effect more prominent. I will recommend not to increase it more than 1. Radius. Radius determines the amount of area where the ambient occlusion effect is produced. The black color. Increase it to 50. And render. Save and compare. You can see radius 10, radius 50, 10, 50. The last one subdivision. It controls the quality of ambient occlusion. Lower values render fast but might introduce noise. Back to our previous scene. Now increase the radius to 36 and subdivision to 16 and render. The result is good. But this result has one drawback. It has less options. Plus, if you want to change the result, you have to render again. So I will only recommend method 1. If you don't know any compositing software like Photoshop, After Effects, Nude, etc. etc. Now I will discuss method 2 as it has more controls and it's industry standard. I'm going to turn it off from here. Okay, for method 2, go to your render elements, select extra texture, click on add, select it from here and open attribute editor either click here 
click here or press control a it's up to you go to extra vitre attributes in your textures click here type dirt and select it from here rename it to anything whatever you want i will rename it to ambient occlusion if you ever lose it like uh, you just miss it where it was so the simplest way is to go to your hyper shade click on textures and it's here now render the scene and save the result now we have two separate renders first is our rgb color render and second is our ambient occlusion OCC pass. Save both of them and open them in Photoshop. Change your, change your OCC render from normal to multiply and you can see the result. If, I'm, if I think it's too dark, it's very easy for me to light it like this. And I can easily control it how much I want it. See? From this to this. Now back to Maya again. Now I will teach you the four most important parameters. Then we will apply this knowledge to our interior scene. Radius. Radius helps how far the occluded color will go, which is black in this case. The more the radius, the more the black occluded color will go and vice versa. Change the radius to 60. Save the previous render and compare. You can clearly see by increasing the radius, my black occluded color is also increasing. Now distribution. Distribution will force the rays to gather closer. The effect is that the dirt area is being narrowed closer to the contact edges. In simple words, it makes the intersection parts more dark. Increase it from 1 to 5. And render. Okay guys, just look at this part. You can see this part was intersecting. These two parts are intersecting. So the intersecting part has more rays. It has, it is dark as compared to this part. Again, look at this place. You can see, and this part is light because the rays that were here are now more towards this side. You might be a little bit confused about this thing and you might be confusing it with fall off. Let me just ex do one render of fall off and then we will look it again. Now come towards fall off. Don't worry. I will compare distribution and fall off in a minute. Fall off controls the speed of transition between occluded and unoccluded area. In this case, between black and white. Change the distribution to one and fall off to five. And render. Okay, now if you look closely, this part is not dark as compared to your distribution. What the fall off does, it actually controls the speed of transition between occluded black and unoccluded white color. Let's just compare it with distribution when the distribution was 5 and fall off was 0 you can see this part is dark black as compared to fall off this part is not dark so again i am repeating it fall off controls the speed of transition 
between the occluded black color and the unoccluded white color. When I increase the fall off to 5, you can see this part is more white and this is not. But as far as the distribution is concerned, it actually makes the intersecting parts or the parts that intersect dark. You can see it here. Hopefully, this is clear to you. Double sided. When enabled, back side of the face will be calculated in ambient occlusion. By back side, I mean opposite side of the face normal. I will recommend to enable it. Now, I hope all of these four parameters are clear to you, especially distribution and fall off. We can improve our interiors with this knowledge. I will increase my radius to 20 because I want a little bit more dark hair plus uh, I will increase my subdivision to 16 to get a better quality and no noise and make sure double sided is checked. Now render it. Save this render. Okay. I can control this ambient occlusion path in my compositing software too. Like I can apply labels, alt click here so that it only affects ambient occlusion path. I can increase my dark areas like this. I can make them more dark or I can increase my white area more or I can simply control it like this. So I have a lot of options to play here. I can even come here, multiply it and then I can play with this part like this. I can or what normally I do, I also play with my hue and saturation a little bit if I want to get some small sharpness in it extremely in a small quantity not too much so this is how we do things and we control our things so you can see this was my normal render and now this is my new render after ambient occlusion pass okay guys before i end this tutorial i just want you guys to note one more thing Displacement map shows ambient occlusion, but bump map does not show ambient occlusion at all. So keep that in mind and hopefully you guys know about this thing and I will recommend, highly recommend to use ambient occlusion path in almost all of your renders, either it's interior, exterior, it's product, whatever it is. It is going to create great soft shadows, turn your ordinary renders into an awesome professional renders. So hopefully you guys like this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, give it a like. If you love this tutorial, subscribe to my channel, share the videos, keep creating guys. Bye bye.